Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to What The Math. Today we're taking a look at yet another exploration of the universe of Interstellar, but this time we're going to be using this awesome space simulator called Space Engine. If you haven't tried it yet, go ahead and try it right now because it's absolutely awesome, it's absolutely free, and it's actually made by one person who's just like me, has a lot of time on their hands. And um, I think just, uh, this is actually a new release, new, newly released version point. 0.972 and when, when I say newly released I think it was it's, it's about a couple of months old but I still haven't tried it and I, I noticed there's quite a lot of new features uh, some of them I may have missed in the last version but this one for example that's that's pretty awesome look at that it actually is an exposure feature that essentially changes this changes the brightness and darkness of space around you so if you want to see stars in the night sky you can actually increase brightness and this allows you to see things better but anyway Enough about features, let's go ahead and start exploring Interstellar. And what we're going to use the space engine for today is for a visual exploration of what it would look like if you lived on Miller's planet. Essentially, what would it look like if you lived next to a very massive body uh, such as a gargancho, the black hole in the movie. And what I would want to, what I would really wanted to see is what it would look like for, uh, for an observer living on that planet. If you live on a planet such as Miller's planet, uh, what would your life look like? If you look into outer space, what do you see? If you look around yourself, what do you see? So we're actually going to go down uh, or try to go down on a planet if there's a planet next to a black hole that we find in this game and then see what it looks like or at least try to simulate using all the knowledge we have uh, from the movie and from the physics. So this is not Miller's planet, obviously, this is just a random planet where you always start in Space Engine as soon as you turn on the game. So I'm going to leave this, leave this beautiful planet and, well, let's actually orient ourselves. Where are we? I don't even know where we are and I'm pretty sure this is actually not Milky Way Galaxy. Is it? I don't know if it says it here. I don't think it is. Yeah, this is probably not where we should be. So we're going to go ahead and go to Milky Way first and then try to find a black hole. Now the search feature right here is actually very useful to find objects, but unfortunately if you just type black hole it's not going to give you anything. So if I just type black hole you get nothing. So we're just going to go ahead and type Milky Way and fly 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 away. And there we go. Warp speed ahead. And here we go. This is Milky Way and there's a few other galaxies around it. This is a large Mag Magellanic Cloud and small Magellanic Cloud. And somewhere over out there there's an Andromeda as well. I don't know where it is actually. Oh boy, I can't find Andromeda. Anyway, Andromeda is there, somewhere. And so what we are going to do is, uh, we're going to try to find a supermassive black hole. Now, how do we find it? Well, what do we know about our galaxy? The way it is, the, the, the reason why it has this shape is because somewhere in the middle, right there, somewhere in the center, there is a supermassive black hole uh, where that essentially makes everything orbit around it. So somewhere right here, there's a mass massive black hole. Now, this one time I actually tried to physically find it by going inside the middle of the galaxy, just like this, slowly flying inside, and then actually trying to find it in, in this extremely saturated body. Uh, oh, what's that? Uh, in this extremely saturated body, and this is actually, it will be really, really difficult to find. First of all, it's invisible because it's black, and second, there's like literally hundreds of billions of stars here to go through, so uh, it's impossible to find it this way, or I mean it's very, very difficult to find it this way. You can find all these other things around it, but uh, not the black hole, unfortunately. So what we're going to do is we're going to play smart. I'm going to go inside the center, or as close to the center as we can, right here. All right, there we go, there we go, this is good. Now, okay, there is some visual glitch right there. And um, these are globular uh, constellations, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a black hole, so how do we do this? Uh, we're going to use the search feature again, but this time this one here, if you click on this button, start browser, and it allows you to search things within certain radius. So we're actually gonna search for something within 10 light years of us, and specifically, I want to choose well, actually, no, let's just search. Search what we find. And we found 300 objects. Now, you can classify them uh, this way if you click on this button. And it tells you what they are. So these, I believe, are uh, yellow dwarfs. These are, these are all different types of yellow dwarfs. These are orange dwarfs. So these are the different types of stars uh, depending on how old they are, depending on their mass, and depending on what they have um, present. Uh, this is a, a 
Ooh, some of them are binary stars, actually. Cool, this is a binary red dwarf. Now, we're looking for a black hole. So there's, there's nothing here because nothing is showing here. There's, ooh, white dwarfs, that's cool. Uh, so that means I'm in the wrong position. So two things you can do. You can still keep flying around or you can change this to 100 light years, which is what I'm going to do because I don't want to fly around. I want to just find a, a black hole. Search. And okay, this is actually the maximum objects it can present at once. There's 10,000 objects. You can use filter right here that will allow you to search for a specific object, but I'm just making it roughly right now. And if I classify, there we go, we already found something. And this, I believe, is a neutron star. Yes, it is. A binary neutron star. And we're actually going to take a look at that as well. Um, and actually, maybe, maybe let's just start with the neutron star. Let's go to a neutron star and see what it looks like, because in the movie, we know that there is a neutron star. And this is something that they experience when they go, uh, when basically they try to change their speed, they do a slingshot maneuver around the neutron star. So this is something we can simulate just to see what it would look like. So let's find the more most massive one. Okay, so I think this one right here is the most massive one, um, most massive neutron star that I was able to find. Is that is that a star? Yeah, that's a brown dwarf orbiting around it. So where is it? Is that it? Oh, 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 so, so close. There we go. That's a neutron star. So we're going to approach it. And there we go. So as I approach it, you see things changing because what a neutron star is, it's essentially a, a tiny region of space or a tiny, tiny star that is essentially, um, it, it's, it's more massive than the sun. It's usually at least twice or approximately twice the mass of sun, but it's been condensed into um, a mass or sorry, a, a radius of approximately uh, between 10 and 20 kilometers or um, between like 7 and 15 miles and what that means is that it's essentially a super ultra dense object and a very very bright and very 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 massive if you try to approach it if you as you approach it you will see things changing first of all it's gonna get super bright because it is ultra ultra bright so close your eyes for a second we're gonna ooh, moving a little bit too fast I'm gonna decrease my speed and we're going to approach it and see what things look like when we're right next to it. And this is actually the object that would be responsible for some of the heat. Oh, so bright, too bright. Uh, some of the heat on uh, certain planets. Specifically, my hypothesis, hypothesis is that the um, Edmund star, uh, sorry, Edmund's planet, uh, is most likely heated by uh, the neutron star, meaning that it's probably orbiting around it. It's not actually, we're not actually told that in the movie, but it would make most sense because it did have heat, warmth, and it could not have been from the, the black hole because it was actually really far away from it. All right, so there we go. We can kind of sort of make the shape out and look at that. Look at the effects already. You can probably kind of already notice that there is a bit of time dilation, sorry, not time dilation, um, a lensing effect going on. And the lensing effect is due to the massive gravity that it's exerting around us. So, oh, oh, no, 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 go back, go back. And here we go. Welcome to the neutron star RS84091828. Uh, this neutron star is one of the more massive ones I could find near the uh, center of our, of our galaxy. Now, this could be actually a real object. For all we know, this is one of the objects detected by um, one of the telescopes. But what you see, what you notice right away is the lensing effect around it. So as I move, as I orbit around the neutron star, um, the light that's coming from behind it is being, uh, essentially is being uh, twisted and, and changed in shape. And it creates this lensing effect around it. This is something we, we've actually seen in the movie as well. As, they are, um, as the astronauts are orbiting, or sorry, approaching cl closer to the black hole. Uh, now, what we know about this neutron star is that it's 1.7 or almost 1.8 times the mass of our sun, and this is why it became a neutron star. If, if you have a star that is as massive as this one, it will not become a black hole. It's not massive enough to become a black hole. Once it undergoes its um, expansion, it's, it's then going to contract into a tiny spot just like this and become a neutron star. Uh, so what else do we know about this? Well, all the information is here. We don't really know, need to know anything else currently. What we want to know is what it would look like if you were trying to perform a slingshot maneuver around this object. So what, what would it actually look like? So I'm going to change... Oh boy, this is really, really bright. I'm going to change this a little bit. And this is actually 
as realistic as we can do it. So um, the, um, the astronauts in the movie probably did not approach it so close. They probably actually were quite far away because it does get super ultra hot as, as the closer you approach to this star because if you look at the temperature, it's ridiculously hot. This is like way hotter than our sun. It's, uh, let me just try to calculate this. It's basically, I think it's like 230,000 degrees Celsius, which is, I don't even know how much it is in Fahrenheit, but it's a lot. Um, and uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this feature called rocket feature, uh, this airplane and rocket, and we're gonna try to fly toward it and try to simulate, okay, this is too fast, moving too fast, moving too fast. Let's actually try this again. So we're gonna move in the rocket and try to approach it maybe at some speed. Okay, a little bit slower. And this is what astronauts were probably experiencing. They were experiencing this really, really, really bright object approaching. And uh, I believe they were trying to slingshot maneuver around it so that they would actually be able to reach enough speed uh, in order to intercept Miller's planet. Now, we are slowly moving away from it. It's actually kind of hard to aim toward the planet. I'm gonna try this again. There we go. So they were kind of moving this way and moved really close to it, then slingshot around it, and that's it. So th at this point, uh, that's this is where some of the light was better, but you can't actually see it because this object is so tiny that you can only see it if you're really, really close to it. So uh, this is what they experienced, but what I find a little bit difficult to believe is they actually, that they actually managed to survive this close approach because approaching a neutron star for a slingshot maneuver would require some serious heat protection. Uh, this is a ridiculously hot object, it's also ridiculously bright, so uh, radiation and um, actual brightness of this object would probably kill most of the astronauts on the spaceship. So I'm not sure how they actually managed to pull it off, but it's a movie, so we can't really, uh, we can't really complain. Okay, so I'm gonna land on this object just to show you what it actually looks at. <laughs> okay, this is this is actually a pretty accurate representation of what it would look like if you were to stand on a neutron star. So first of all. You, there's a bit of a lensing right here on the bottom of it, uh, on, the, on basically on the horizon. And second of all, it's spinning, and some of these things spin ridiculously fast. Uh, this super fast spinning neutron stars are called pulsars, and they usually spin uh, several times a second, creating this kind of a pulsing effect uh, that we can actually detect from our planet. Anyway, so we are basically standing on top of neutron, neutron star, which is not something you see every day. Let's get out of here and let's go find our black hole. And as I'm leaving the neutron star, you can actually see the lensing effect right here again uh, because of the mass. All right, so let's get out of here and move back into the outer galaxy and try to find, or actually we might as well just stay here and try to find the black hole that is that supermassive black hole that I'm looking for.